Dr. Russ said that he wanted to do some videos today, but I don't have a clue where he went to. <coughs> oh, Dr. Paula is our photographer, video photographer today. Well, I was just getting next week's video ready. I think if you don't have interesting targets, you can lose some of your passion for these guns. And uh, uh, it's not that great of a wolf, but I cut it out of coroplast. And uh, we're gonna shoot the wolf. Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe I'm a little better at wild boar than, wolf, than uh, wolves. But here's some more targets. All of this is just to make it more interesting when we shoot. This is our toy box. Oh yeah, there's Dracula up there. And uh, some of the elks that uh, you and I have both harvested. The uh, coroplast I, I covered in one of our earlier videos, just painted black, I go out in November and collect the losers who don't come back and get their signs and paint them black. And then I I put the uh, splat targets on them and uh, from uh, birch, whatever, I, I uh, black out everything so that my holes are the only things that show. But all of this is going to be a next video and uh, you'll definitely want to subscribe, hopefully give us a thumbs up, and I'll show you this stuff next week. Hell, we'll shoot at it too. Right now, we're dealing with <laughs> one horrible Michigan winter, and it's only worse along our east coast. I think New Jersey's supposed to get two feet today. We've got about seven inches on the ground, and uh, it's impacted our shooting. Uh, the, not so much the snow, the bitter cold. It was minus eight last night and minus six when I woke up. It's probably about minus two right now. And uh, it's the gust of winds that have uh, really uh, hindered us in getting some videos out. But uh, we're gonna get some out now, regardless of weather. Follow me. Okay, for a proper introduction, I'm Dr. Russ, you're in Southeast Michigan. I should say a snowy and very cold and gusty Southeast Michigan. We should probably count our blessings and we're not getting what that East Coast is getting right now as much as two feet of snow, I'm told. Uh, before I get into today's topic, and that's regulators, and I have two identical guns, one with a regulator, one without. We're going to shoot, see what the target says, why do we want regulators, and then uh, install one so you know how to do that too. But before I get into regulators, I've asked for your help. This is a logo that we've been working on after two years of providing about 62 videos, I think. And uh, we found out that after showing this that you came back with some ideas. So we are now over here. Uh, we're using a pellet shape instead of a shield. And we've learned from our uh, uh, logo uh, applicator that putting uh, our mission statement down here at the bottom um, was too much. It wouldn't fit on the front of a cap. Oh, it fit on the back of a t-shirt, but not on the front of a cap. So we've moved it up and we've expanded it from stay air gun sharp to stay air gun safe, sharp. And for those of you who like to hunt, silent. Uh, we got rid of a wild boar and a, and a skunk. And now we just have a wolf and a target. Uh, colors have been red and gold blue and gold uh, probably the trees might be green uh, but whatever help you can give us uh, before we take it all over to the logo people 
and have them put on caps and shirts and I'll be wearing them instead of different caps each week uh, because this probably will be a pretty cool cap. Let's get into the regulators. Well, before we even talk about regulators, we ought to find out what the reward would be or it's not worth doing. So what is the regulator reward? Well, I'm going to be using two hats and bull bosses for training aids today, but it really doesn't matter what brand, uh, you're going to get the gist of what this is all about. When we don't have a regulator, the gun is shooting an amount of air behind the pellet and it's inconsistent with the amount that it's going to shoot on the second and the third shot. So a regulator regulates that so that it's a precise amount of air and now the pellets can start dropping in the next pellets hole if you will. So if we don't have a pellet, uh, don't have a, reg a regulator, you might get a group that looks something like this. But uh, when we do have a regulator, you start to get a single hole that might look something like that. And this is what we're after. Uh, because this is what's required to do well in competition, to do well against your buddies, and definitely good for hunting not just at the 30 yard shot but imagine what this does as we spread it on out to 50 75 and even 100 yards oh these can be feet apart by then but not here we've stayed tight that's what we're going to study today so now when we used a springer uh, we don't use a regulator I'll get into that a little bit later and we don't use regulators with uh, 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 brake barrels. Uh, you're almost doubling the price of the gun, which doesn't make good math at that end. And secondly, uh, those guns are really good out to about 30, 35 yards, and you're in a pretty tight group right there. But if you have a PCP gun, oh, that's when you need the regulator. So let's pretend that the uh, compressed air which might be in a bottle it might be in a cylinder is represented by this balloon and uh, let's put 10 pounds of pressure into the balloon and then 20 and as we put more and more pressure in this balloon can fill up but as the uh, the air goes out then all of a sudden after a few shots we only have 40 we squeak open the top of the balloon pretty soon we have 30 and then even less this is why ultimately the shots will dwindle down because we actually have less air how could a regulator change that? Well, keep in mind that how this water, uh, air gets out is we have uh, right here a hammer spring. And uh, I wish I was a great artist, but I'm not. But pretend this hammer is hitting the spring and when it crosses here it allows that air out that's what all PCP guns have but the problem is this air is getting lower so we need a regulator to change that picture and how we do that is this so now our balloon really has two connections one in which the air comes in via a hand pump, a scuba tank, a, uh, a compressor, and it fills this. And now we're going to 
change the numbers a bit and say that this pressure gets up to about 3,000 uh, pounds per square inch. And at the other end of the balloon, a balloon, we have a second escape valve. And in this section here, we put a regulator. But we set it at 2,000. That's why we often have uh, two dials in a regulated gun. One is telling us the pressure in the main compression tank, and one is telling us what the regulator has been set for. Notice now that after the first shot, it's very easy for this to fill 2,000 pounds down here. And once it gets down to 2,000, it begins to act like a gun without a regulator. And then they both go down together. Maybe both have a thousand in them because it requires, the regulator requires more air pressure in the compression tank. So what we get on something like this is uh, a rather straight uh, shot of rounds all at the same distance, putting them on top of one another uh, before it drops where without this regulator they talk about a bell curve and then the drop off. Uh, down here it takes a couple of shots for the gun to get going and then she, she uh, everything warms up in it and we get more of a bell. But we don't get consistency and that's what regulators are all about. Well I promise you today that I had two identical guns these are both Hatson, they're both in 25 caliber. One has a woodstock, one has the lighter weight uh, black plastic stock. And uh, they both have the same scopes, they both have a QE barrel. Um, and as you can see here, this one doesn't have a suppressor on it, this one does. Why? Because getting it from Donnie FL, he said just make a switch and that suppressor can come onto this gun. Uh, let's pretend for a moment this was a different gun. I could put a little different suppressor up here, uh, not a suppressor, an adapter, and still move the suppressor to it if I so desired. Also, in tuning a gun, there's all kinds of chronographs. So this is a chronograph on the end of the barrel. It's really the only FX piece of equipment that I own, but it's a good one. And it tells me the speed of this pellet. I watch YouTube videos all the time and I watch them use their chronographs improperly. In this example, I want to make sure that both guns are shooting with the exact same power as I put a regulator into this bull boss, catching up with the accuracy of this bull boss. So you can change the power with often a screwdriver or a hex head coming in from the back here and changing the power higher or less. They never do that in the videos. So I've had to make changes so that they both have the same velocity, same pellets, same um, energy when they hit. And then we get a true reading of why we may want to put a regulator in. Now here is a target that I did with this bull boss right here. This has the regulator in it. This bull boss does not have the regulator in it. You can see just a little bit more spread out, but boy, once you get out to 75 and 100 yards, you, you'll start to have trouble just staying on the paper here. Um, well, at least on the target in the center. Uh, and so I want a regulator so that I can do this at just about any range. That's our goal today. Your first question might be, what does a regulator look like? Well, 
when we're going to go into a tubular compressor it looks just like this and uh, you can see the fine mesh filtering there all to keep moisture out of this gun and my job today is to get this into this before that we've got to degas this you don't want to be taking off any uh, compressors and opening that valve to put this regulator in unless the air is gone or we'll see an explosion might see a tube go into a wall uh, so I'll begin with taking this chron uh, chronograph off and uh, I've got my degassing tool here and it all begins with taking this compressing compressor tube off the gun uh, a lot of guns have these and they are they are screwed off just like any other screw that you might have here is uh, the manufacturer's effort to have a regulator but it's not a good regulator that's why we have to go and get something even better how do I get the air out because as you can see we've got quite a bit of air in this gun I wanted to shoot these guns and those targets to a point where uh, uh, they were equal and uh, that's how I hunt. So when we have a degassing tool, we want to make the turns very small and tiny until we hear the uh, air escaping. And we want to let it just escape in small amounts, gas degassing, in small amounts. until the pressure is zero. So again, when we're sure that all the air is out of this tube, we start taking this original regulator off. Now, I have seen some people in this hollow tube for air put a baby bottle cleaning brush. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's it's a long brush that's circular just about like this and can go in you clip off the handle you just want the bristle portion down in here now, why in the world would you want to not only put it in but leave it in and the answer is I'm told I haven't practiced this yet myself but it takes the ping sound when you fire and of course you know that pings coming in through that ear making probably one of the loudest noises. I talked about suppressors once and I talked about the four sounds. There's the ping and then as the pellet goes down the barrel it pops out. There's a pop sound. That's what suppressors often uh, go after. And then the zing, ping, pop, zing as it heads on downrange, particularly if it's breaking the speed of sound which is approximately a thousand and fifty feet a second which is why we stay under a thousand and then lastly the stop so ping pop zing stop that's when it hits your backstop or the animal you're hunting and boy there's some noisy backstops and there's some silent backstops you want to be silent if possible it'll keep the complaints from the neighbors down Okay, so now I have this empty one. I'm not going to put the baby bottle brush in it. But this, uh, this part I do need to take out. And you typically just stick a uh, hex head in there. Let's see. And then another like this. Well, why would you want to do this? Because this allows you, unless you 
I've seen some people take some needle nose pliers and stick it in and twist it. Sometimes changing the shape of those holes. But I found this method. I don't want to lose any. That was a little bit of oil coming out. So here's the spring and down inside there you can see uh, the uh, uh, pin that goes here and functions all the way from back here and that's what opens up this pressure. Okay, now that we have this off, we come over here to the regulator and we note that it can come off too. This is what captures, this is what captures that air. Uh, uh, that's precision and regulated amount. Uh, as we then put these back together. This is where we can make changes. Do we want this regulator to be at 2,000, 2,500, 3,000, 1,800, but some pressure lower than this holds? That's what allows this to work so beautifully. Now, we also have to take out one of these rubber uh, um, circular seals, but before that, I want to get this all clean. Okay, I've lined these parts up now so that you can see what they'll look like fitting in. Here's the new regulator, and it will, in a moment, be going in there. This is the new section of Precision Air, and it will go on next. This spring goes on to that pin right there, and that pin, other end is here. And when this is compressed by the hammer, that is what allows a, the precision amount of air to come in here and to fire. So uh, we're going to not use this piece at all. It's no longer necessary. We are going to uh, put this spring around the hammer pin just like that. And well actually before I do that I do need to take this rubber ring off. We want this rubber ring off when we do the reassembly. And I don't want to screw up these uh, threads. So I often pull it out as much as I can in getting this off. Now this rubber seal is still good. It's like new. And uh, might be able to be used on another gun in another situation. But in the meantime, it comes off of what was regulating the air up to now. So with this off, and that spring in, and it's going to fit right there, and you can see the, the uh, pin, the hammer pin is going to go right into that hole, and into this section, which is the new section of precision air. So we now screw this in. And we want it hand tight. Now then, 
I have, uh, we still have a, a, a rubber seal here, and that's all that's needed. This one that I took off is not needed. And we still have a rubber seal now at this end. I have cleaned these threads, and I've even put a little bit of uh, lube on them. Uh, this is Castrol uh, gun lube. I uh, also put it on pellets before shooting them, slugs before shooting them. And as you can see this in, that's where that hammer pin can go in there. And of course, that's also where you can adjust the amount of air that's in here. But now we bring this up and we screw it in here. Everything is to be snug. So this is what used to regulate the air. This is the new regulator that makes it a precision amount of air that then uh, goes into uh, the, the gun. It collects the air this way and it comes out over here. When this hammer spring is hit, these are the air holes that the precision amount from here comes on. Okay, now that I have this cleaned, uh, the threads are lubed. I now can put this down inside. and screw it in. <sighs> Those threads are actually a little bit sharp, so you want to be careful there. Um, To get this as tight as I can. Like that. Now, my channel locks and others, I've taken a piece of duct tape and I've put them on it so that when I do make adjustments, I don't scar up the, the, uh, the nut at all. So now we snug that in real good. And she's all set to go back into the gun. This is good. I've cleaned it. I've put some lube on it. Now, we don't want to ex lube getting on down into the gun. Uh, anytime we clean a gun, clean this area, we also want it to be aimed upside down so that any oil will go down the barrel and uh, out. It isn't that oil can hurt uh, triggers and springs and stuff, but oil carries with it dirt. And because this gun doesn't work on powder, it works on air. It's got to be very clean air. So now we reinsert the compression tube. The Bull Boss was one of the guns that, that Hatson made that still uses the tubes. You can buy extra tubes and go hunting and take an extra amount of air with you when this one goes dry. Um, and now this gun is regulated. From here, I find out, since everything else is the same, how good this shoots compared to my other bull boss that's regulated. And most important, to find out if it shoots better, tighter groups. Let's find out. Well, what was the reward for that work? 
This is our original bull boss with the wood stock. This is the black bull boss, and this had a regulator. This gun did not have a regulator. After we put the regulator in, this is the tight group we got. Now, I've still got to sight in the scope better, uh, and so we've got to come about an inch to a half inch to the right, and one down. My other bull boss shoots a little bit high. I might just bring it over an inch and not down, because these are being done at 35 yards, and most of my critter kills are 65. Now you remember, the scope is here, the barrel is here. The barrel isn't parallel to the scope, so as the scope is always straight, or iron sights, the rifle has to shoot upward, and it crosses pretty doggone close at 30, 35 yards for most guns. It then shoots high. And around 65, 70 yards, it comes right back down and into the target. I have my Woodstock bull ball shooting just a hair high so that I can reach out there between 65, 75 yards. And I want this one to do the same. But this is what it did before. I hope you know something about regulators now. They make a precision amount of air to take that slug or pellet down range. Very important. You're going to get more shots because again, following my drawing, we're shooting at 2,000 pounds instead of 3,000. Uh, certainly less. I like that 24, 2,500 pounds. I like to fill the tanks up to about 35. I have a couple of tanks now on my large bore that are 4,500 pounds. But you want more power, air power in the, the compression tubes or tanks, and less that goes through this regulator, and that gives you more shots and consistent shots. All into the number one priority of air gunning, accuracy. So that's what we got today, a more accurate air gun. I hope this helped. Uh, give us a thumbs up. If it wasn't good, give us a thumbs down. And subscribe. I've got some good videos coming up and I, I want you to see them.